with its gleaming new shopping malls and high-rise apartments, Yangon's become the symbol of Myanmar's economic rise. But in its poorest neighborhoods, families turn to loan sharks just to survive. I'm Steve Chow. On this episode of 101 East, we meet those trapped in a cycle of debt and the people who profit from their despair. In Yangon, living on the wrong side of the tracks means living on the wrong side of the river. It is here that rural migrants are forced to settle while they search for jobs in the city. Some cross the river at the break of dawn, knowing that they will return with some money in their hands. But for most, those with no regular source of income, mornings are just the start of another day of struggle. Every day, Lone Lone comes to the market to buy food for her family. Every cent counts. The 20 year old is shopping for her husband, two infant children, and three members of her extended family. But with just $2.20 to spend, she can't afford to buy much. Lone Lone earns $4.50 a day in a part-time job cooking and cleaning for middle-class families in the city. This makes Lone Lone the family breadwinner, with her husband working just two days a week as a plumber. The family have been struggling ever since Lone Lone gave birth to their twins, Suponchit and Winchit, last year. With hospital bills of $150, they had to take out a loan from a local moneylender, who charges a steep 20% monthly interest. Over the course of 18 months, they managed to pay back almost all of that money. But then the monsoon season struck. Every day, as she makes her way to the moneylender's house, Lone Lone carries with her more than half the family's earnings. It's a heavy burden. <coughs> the moneylender is a friend of the family, and a young mother herself. But all feelings of empathy were forgotten when deciding the terms of the loan. With such high interest rates, how long do you think it's going to take for you to pay back these loans? Lonelon is not the only one crippled by high interest rates. In neighbourhoods like this, 85% of households have borrowed money. The loans usually rescue the borrower from an immediate financial emergency. But with monthly interest rates as high as 50%, they come at a crushing cost.
Mornings for 13-year-old Ung Thet Peng and his 10-year-old brother, San Lin Ung, start with breakfast and a play fight. In the past, they would head off to play football with their friends. Now, the only game that the two boys can play involves weaving in between the traffic, desperately searching the size of the road for plastic bottles and tin cans. It's a relentless task, particularly in the summer months when temperatures can soar to 40 degrees Celsius and shade is difficult to find. But with a family of six to feed, the boys have little choice. The boy's mother first took us a loan of just $3.50 with 20% monthly interest. Eight months later, she owes $60. With their debts spiraling out of control, their mother decided to take her sons out of school and put them to work as rubbish collectors. <laughs> ตัวเดียวอะไรซ่อจ้องมาแต่จ้องตะกันยากตานี่มาเดียวจ้องตะได้อะไรตู่ไล่ปู่นี่จ้องมาเลยจิ๋มจ้องเลยไล่จิ
What are the living and working conditions like for these children? Some people would say that taking children below the legal working age and placing them in jobs in different towns and cities is human trafficking. Would you agree with that? The irony is that Dorluin believes she is helping the families around her. But even after she sends their underage and underpaid children off to work, the burden of debt remains. And it's the community's moneylenders who gain the most. So who are these shrewd individuals, profiting from their friends and neighbours? Dorte is the village seamstress, but she doesn't spend much time behind the sewing machine. With no shortage of people looking for some quick cash, money lending takes up more and more of Dorte's time. She has around 20 clients who pay monthly interest rates of either 20 or 30 percent. Technically, this makes her work illegal. Individual moneylenders cannot charge more than 18 percent per annum, and they require an official license. But the antiquated law is rarely policed, and Dorte says other moneylenders get away with charging a lot more. <laughs> Would you say that your money lending operation is more of a business or a service?
We've met families that have been so crippled by their interest payments that they struggle to feed their children. Do you think that it can still be classified as a service when these are the consequences? In fact, according to Dorte, the risks fall solely upon the money lenders, with clients regularly disappearing in the middle of the night without paying off their debts. It is rare here for money lenders to get violent when their clients refuse to pay. But social shaming is a common tactic and one that is often employed by Dorte as she patrols the neighborhood. But for Dorte, the benefits outweigh the risks. And with interest rates of up to 30%, she has decided that money lending makes good business sense. And with a steady stream of clients, that future and her profits are looking rosy. Spending time with Dorte has shown that the ethics of money lending are not black and white. The loan sharks are profiting from the vulnerability of their neighbours, but they're such a vital component of the local economy that monthly interest rates of 20 to 30% are considered normal. The problem is that cash is still king in Myanmar, with less than 20% of the population owning bank accounts. However, there is one place where neither the banks nor money lenders operate. I've come to the suburb of Yangon to meet a group of women that have managed to escape the clutches of loan sharks through a collective savings scheme. The results have been life-changing. For the last nine years, these 34 women have been meeting every week to invest their money in a group savings account. They deposit $2.50 into this green box, and after three months of weekly investment, they are eligible for a loan. For the system to work, everything must be fair and accountable, so the women have set up strict rules, which they must all adhere to. They do pay monthly interest, but just 2%, and at the end of the year, that money is shared among the group. Since the initiative began, they have used the profits from their savings account to buy a plot of land, build themselves new housing, and create a community of entrepreneurs who are financially self-sufficient. Before joining the collective, Kinya Moore could barely afford her rent. Hello, 
She is one of the few artisans who can make traditional percussion mallets in Yangon. Yet before, she could only produce around 50 a week. With help from the group, Kinya Moore was able to buy the additional materials that she needed in order to meet the demand from her clients. She now produces anything from 100 to 1,000 pieces a week. ตะเกลุบ่เนาะดีพွဲซีอ่ะไม่ชิเกอไม่ตွေ့เกออดีพွဲซีเนี่ยไม่ตွေ့เกอซอยจมอะเปลี่ยนมาโซลูชั่นบ